Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're at Formnext in Germany. We're taking a look at some of the latest and greatest tech in 3D printing. We're talking with some new partners, some old partners, and we're going to chop this up into lots of different videos so that we can try to cover as much as humanly possible. But first of all, let's play a game of jacket, no jacket, because sometimes I'm going to be hot and sometimes I'm not. And it's going to make it really difficult from an editing perspective. <laughs> Let's get in there. Hello guys and dolls. So we are back at the photocentric booth today. We are covering two things. So the big reveal today is Titan and big is a massive understatement. So we'll go over Titan in a second. But the other thing we're taking a look at is the LC Opus 12K. So this is using sublimination pixels. So it is uh, giving you a build volume of 310 by 174 by 220. And then we're getting a pixel so again, bear in mind, pixel resolution is what's important. So pixel resolution on this, 27 by 81 microns. So this is gonna give you really, really great detail. The slicer for this is now free when you buy the, pre when you buy the printer. So uh, we did not get a free slicer when, uh, when we had ours, but now it is. So this is a really solid machine. The unique feature about, um, about Opus is how it does its VAT release. So there is dual Z on this. There's a Z that moves the bed plate up and down, and then there is another Z at the back of the build VAT, which moves up at the same time as the build plate does, which reduces that peel force, meaning you can print faster. Their slicer is one of the most advanced slicers um, out there and Studio is a very technical program for very technical people. Um, your designers will really enjoy using it. We found it a little bit daunting when we first started with it, but once you actually understand what all the parts of it do, it's incredibly detailed and gives you a very low level of control of everything that you're doing. You need to understand the material science a little bit, but honestly, it, it's great. So let's take a look at Titan. Hi guys and dolls, we are back with Titan. So Titan is obviously giant. It's one of the largest uh, printers that you guys have ever done. So let's talk specs. Yeah. So talk to me about it, it's yeah. huge. So Titan is the biggest, uh, largest LCD 3D printer in the world. It has a 32 inch 8K screen. Right. So not only it's big, it's high resolution as well. Uh, so the build volume is 695 to 385 to 1200 mil right um, and uh, the pixel pitch is x and y resolution is 91 micron yep layer thickness as their demand you know 100 micron 350 250 50 micron depends how uh, how long they want to wait for their print yeah um, in terms of speed it can go in terms of z speed it can go as fast as 86 mil per hour 86 millimeters an hour for a machine like yes. this so yeah I mean, generally when we talk about industrial machines, we talk about going much, much slower to be able to achieve prints that are stable and able to actually print at this sort of size. So being able to do that level of speed is, you've not just got the build volume, but you've got the print speed of like three other machines going together all at the same time. Yes, yes. Brilliant, yes. right, okay. Yes. So I can see that we've got uh, a lot of monitoring things in here as well. So we have, is this auto, so this is VAT refill and yes. VAT level. And so then... uh, the, we call it resin management system. Yep. And it does, as you said, it has a fill and empty as well as managing the uh, level of resin during the print as well. It does something very really clever. So when you, when you cure a layer, so it dispenses how much resin we have used for the previous layer. So it's right. very accurate um, controlling. If you, go, if you go really large on MSLA, one of the big issues you have is that you can't support the middle of the screen. So when you have a giant vat, what you actually have is a very large amount of material pushing down on your screen at all times. But because your print is very large, you need a large amount of resin. Yeah. So you maintain a lower amount of resin in the tank. Yeah. You keep that level um, exactly where it needs to be yeah. because the resin management system makes sure there is always enough resin to print with, but never enough to overwhelm the screen with yes. the pressure pushing yeah. down on it. Right, yeah. okay, cool. Um, um, having little resin, not not little, having minimum amount of resin in the valve has so much benefit. Um, first of all, for the speed. Yep. Um, co uh, controlling the heat, uh, the re uh, resin temperature. 
just in case, God forbid, and if you have a VAT leak. Yep. Uh, we have a, actually a VAT leak sensor, which we, it, we, ha we will stop the disaster to happen, which I can talk about it as well. But it's just having a little bit of resin in the VAT, it's, it has all sorts of yeah. uh, benefits. There's also a lot to be said about how many times different projects require different materials yeah. and not having to remove 25 litres yeah. worth of resin Absolutely. from a vat just yeah. to be able to change yes. over to your yeah. next customer's yes. needs is obviously a really huge deal. Yeah. But Titan is not the only part of this ecosystem, right? We, we, we push down and we've got, we've, got the, we've got the cure and the wash as well. So let's yeah. take a look at yes. those. Yes. So rightly, as you said, we offer a full solution to our customers, including the wash uh, as well as the cure unit. So the wash unit, you know, um, for your audience that they are familiar with um, um, resin type yep. 3D printing. So we need to clean the excess of the resin, and then we do recommend to rinse it, to just uh, to just uh, wash, rinse away the resin cleaner on the on the surface and then dry it before going to the, the cure unit. Yep, so right. all of those functions, wash, rinse and dry, they all happen in one wash unit, yep. this, this wash unit. And after, when the part is ready to go to the cure unit, uh, we hand it over to the cure unit. So we've also got in that instance though, so we're also dealing with washing completely differently to the way you would traditionally yeah. deal with it. So the way that you would normally deal with it, you'd have a giant vat of IPA that you would then normally create a vortex or agitate the IPA, which then gets away all the excess material. With this, you don't have to have a, I mean, obviously with the, with the cubic volume of, of, of what you're working with with the Titan, you're just trying to make sure that this can sort of minimize the amount of IPA and the amount of waste of that material because you're doing it through these incredibly uh, sticky arms yeah. um, and you've got all of your you've got all of your piece you've got all your equipment inside of this so yeah. to, to actually spray and remove it rather yeah. than trying to just hope that it comes off with agitated uh, IPA. Um, absolutely you're right uh, so we use um, resin cleaner which are uh, on a chemical it's it's, a, it's different from IPA, it has a high, higher flash point, so it doesn't evaporate uh, as quick as IPA. Right. And sometimes IPA leaves a white mark as well, and yep. this one um, doesn't. This machine, if I want to describe it, I call it as the manual dishwasher. So you manually spray uh, the resin cleaner and then the water, and then yep. by the air gun you, um, you clean it. It's a, so as you said, historically, we have this giant bath, we dunk the uh, parts into it. And this one, it was impractical yeah. to go with that solution yeah. because we needed about three meter or even more clearance yeah. and some facilities, they cannot afford that high. So we had to do something like this, like a dishwasher. And yeah. then we come on to Cure. So Cure is not just Cure, right? This is, this is heat as well as light. Yes. I have been specifically told not to stand in it, but it is very large and you could stand in it if you owned your own one, because yes. they can't stop you from doing it then. Yeah. Um, but it's a rotating UV light source that goes all the way yeah. around. It works very similar to the way that a lot of, to a lot of sort of domestic UV ones work as well. But so if you're heating this at the same time as curing, does that mean you're almost annealing the part at the same time? Or is it just, is the heat just used to, is just used as a curing thing? Just, um, heat, just use it as a curing. Right. And the reason is because if you think about it, the light can penetrate a few millimeter to the surface of the part. Yep. So the core of the parts, they, they need, um, they need another form of initiation to cure, to f uh, terminate the crosslink, to finish the crosslinking. Right. That's why we use heat. Right, uh, right, okay. Heat. So the other special thing about this unit, the mixture of uh, 365 and 405 nanometers. So okay, it's not only so you can cure yeah. both magna parts yeah. and you could also cure titan parts all and in this. And also our uh, dear competitors, SLA parts as well, which do, they are yeah. 365. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. But it just means that, so this is the center of a larger manufacturing offering that you guys yeah. have. So you would have potentially multiple magnas and you would still be able to use this as the core curing chamber for yes. everything that you're doing. Yeah. You don't have to specifically use it with no. titan. No, Brilliant. Don't have to. Oh. The, the Titan platform gets loaded there. Um, for Magna, they can actually put it on the rotating table 
or we can have a doctor. And both rotate, right? Because we're yes, rotating at the top as well at as at the bottom. Time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much for making the time. Absolutely. Catch you on the next one. Thank you very much. Thank you.